Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome to my first actual KSP2 gameplay video that I'm going to be releasing on this channel. It is going to be a bit of a quick and dirty video that I've put together over the course of today due to the fact that my in-laws are down at the moment and I don't have the time to go in and heavily edit and go crazy over this video. So what I am going to be doing is kind of going back a little bit to more of my old style of just a bit of over-the-top commentary whilst you see what I am doing in the game. And this video is going to be me flying Starship, or at least some sort of recreation of Starship, landing it on the moon and heading back to Kerbin afterwards, where hopefully I will be able to successfully bring Starship back. Now, I wanted to do this for a couple of reasons. There is a challenge, a week one challenge to land something on the moonar surface. And I thought, what better to send than Starship, you know? Because I've never really done an awful lot of that in stock KSP1. So I thought I'd give it a go in the second one. I am building it on screen right now. And because I am still somewhat unfamiliar with Kerbal Space Program 2, as I'm sure a lot of people are, it's only very new. It only came out yesterday. Yes, it's... It's very new and obviously quite problematic at the moment, but if you want to see more about my thoughts on that, definitely go check out my video that I released yesterday, KSP2, The Honest Truth, because I delve into that quite a bit. But I do have to say I am enjoying it a little bit more, and I think that's because I'm limiting myself and kind of managing my expectations. Anyway, going back to what I was originally going to say is that because I'm unfamiliar with the game, I don't really know what the parts are yet, so I can't really talk in depth about what's going on. And you know, I don't usually play stock KSP, so none of these parts are familiar to me. I know that I've used four. 14 vector engines for Super Heavy, 3 vector engines for the Starship Orbiter, and 3 swivel engines to mimic the sea level Raptor engines that would be on Starship. And with that, it's completely built. Let's roll this out to the pad and get it launched. So here we are on the launch pad. I skipped the countdown because, you know, there's not really anything going on screen whilst the countdown occurs. And lo and behold, the entire thing is not wobbling apart at the moment, which is definitely an improvement on what was happening yesterday. Although, I do have a reason for that, and I will go into that in a little bit in this video. Yes, I have made some fixes to the game that someone sent over to me on my Discord, which now makes rockets less floppy, which is wonderful. That being said, for some reason on this iteration of Starship, well, the struts between the actual Starship Orbiter and Super Heavy Booster, yes, they disappeared. And this is what happens. Thank you for there being no auto strut currently. Auto strut would have fixed this problem, but no, we have a limp noodle of a rocket. So let's try this again. This time the struts are present. However, somehow Kerbin has entered a period of global warming and all of the oceans have disappeared and the atmosphere has gone. Well, hopefully third time is the charm. This time the struts are there. The atmosphere is back. The oceans are visible. Everything is looking a little bit better and we are able to get Starship off the pad. So earlier on, I did mention that the rockets are no longer a floppy mess. And that is because someone so kindly over on Discord sent me a way of changing the rigidity of the parts that are connected to each other. I will put that up on the screen now just to show you where exactly you can find that within your files, and it does vastly improve the performance of the rockets. You still do need to connect some parts together with struts, as was evident with the first iteration of the Starship that I launched. Yes, without those struts between the Orbiter and Super Heavy, it did still flop all over the place, but parts actually connected to each other without a decoupler in between are no longer anywhere near as floppy as they were at the start of the launch, which is fantastic. That was one of my biggest gripes about the game. Honestly, I still really do want auto strut to exist. Auto strut is incredibly useful and it would also mean that I wouldn't have to bother with using struts everywhere, which I personally think looks quite ugly, but that's maybe just my opinion. Whilst I was building this in the VAB, you may have noticed that I did put some control surfaces on the top of the super heavy booster to try and mimic the grid fins that super heavy booster does have. Obviously, right now in Kerbal Space Program 2, we don't actually have any air brakes, so 
I was a little bit concerned placing some fins at the top of this rocket, thinking maybe the aerodynamics of this would mean that it would flip and flop and go all over the place. But fortunately, due to the fact that I was using vector engines and not just one or two or three or four, I was using 14 of them on the first stage of this rocket. Well, their gimbal is absolutely fantastic and I didn't really have any struggles flying this at all. Clearly, I'm not using MechJev or anything like that because they are not part of Kerbal Space Program 2 yet, but the first stage was not quite depleted of fuel, but I cut it a little bit early and then I detached the Starship Orbiter to send that into its orbit. Now, the reason why I left a little bit of fuel left in the first stage booster is because I wanted to do what Starship does. I wanted to try and fly it back or at least fly it somewhere and land on the surface of Kerbin, do a propulsive landing and bring that booster back. Unfortunately, I was unable to do this because for some reason you cannot switch between vessels while still in the atmosphere, or at least the game was not allowing me to move away from the active vessel being the Starship Orbiter. I went back and I was just going to film the booster. I was going to leave the Orbiter to go and do whatever it wanted in a separate save, and I was going to try and land the booster just to show that it could be done, just to prove that I could do it. Well, it can't be done, so there went that plan. Oh well, maybe someone will inevitably introduce something like FMRS into Kerbal Space Program 2, or maybe the devs will add it in a few content update. Obviously, this is still an early access game. I know it's early access game. I know so many people in my last video told me this is an early access game. I know it is. I play a lot of early access games. I am really excited to see where this goes. That whole video that I did yesterday was not meant to be me thinking that it was a feature complete game. I know there are many features that will still be coming out for Kerbal Space Program 2, but what I didn't expect was there to be loads and loads and loads of things from the first one that were kind of really crucial and critically important to be missing. But anyway, that was that video. This is this video, and what I am doing right now is finalizing my orbit with the Starship Orbiter. But this was quite tricky due to the fact that, well, I'm not entirely sure what the T2 Apoapsis and Periapsis is doing, but they seem to wobble and go all over the place with no mind of their own, really. They, they are a little bit just weird and don't seem to add up with what I am actually doing. But we made it into orbit. Starship is there. I have plotted out my maneuver to the moon and now we are going to burn. Using those vector engines to actually help flip Starship around, the RCS on this really isn't powerful enough to move it very quickly and I was a little bit late trying to start the turn to get this to burn to the moon. Now, I didn't show the maneuver because, well, plotting out maneuvers in Kerbal Space Program 2 right now is egregious at best. Yeah, they are really annoying. As you can see over on the top right of the screen where the moon is currently, I cannot see my trajectory through its sphere of influence. That is a bug. I know that's a bug. Hopefully that will get patched out soon, but it currently does make it really hard to get a nice close encounter with the moon when I can't see my trajectory through its sphere of influence. But Lo and behold, we are at the moon. There we go. I skipped the flight over because who wants to see that? And now we are firing up those three vector engines again, or the sea level, not even the sea level, the sea, no, the vacuum raptor engines. Yes, the vectors are the vacuum level raptors to capture into a lice, a lice? Oh, bloody hell, my words today, really, I'm not doing very well at speaking this. It's probably because I'm trying to rush to get this voiceover done so I can release this video today. More KSP2 content. Everyone wants KSP2 content. Yes, let's release all of the content. But we are in a nice moonar low orbit and now what I am going to be doing is beginning the final descent onto the surface. Realistically, I should have tried to aim for one of the basaltic flats on the moon now, one of the new nice flat basaltic flats, but I didn't really care where I was going to land so I just burnt when I felt like it was necessary and ended up in this rather large rocky crater with lots of bumps, lumps and everything to get in the way of me trying to land safely on the surface of the moon. This was a very silly idea. Flatland or hillside? What would you rather land on if you are attempting to land a very long, tall, cylindrical object? And talking of long, tall, cylindrical objects, if you have KSP2 and you have done your own Starship design, why not head over to my Discord link in the description to share some pictures of that there? Because I would personally love to see them. Because this was something I put together really quickly. I was quite pleased with it, but I'm sure people have done better. But anyway... 
We have touched down upon the surface of the moon. Challenge completed. There we go. Week one challenge done. And just like that, we are going to take off again because this is uncrewed. I don't have any crew on board, so we don't need to get out, plant a flag, do all of that kind of stuff. No, there is just a probe core at the top of this controlling the entire mission. And we are going to make our way back to Kerbin because that's the next exciting thing. Seeing if this thing actually flies in the atmosphere. Now, I know one thing about Kerbin right now and one thing about KSB2 is there is currently no thermal properties. That means you don't need heat shields to enter into the atmosphere. This being a large fuel tank should be able to enter the atmosphere without burning up. I don't know if this will work in the future. I know it is something that they are working on implementing quite soon and they listed it as one of the things that they have actually got in mind for a future update relatively soon as part of their first patch notes on Steam. But anyway, I have performed a maneuver around the moon and we are heading back to Kerbin and lo and behold, once again, suddenly Kerbin. It's there, it's big and we are going going to be entering its atmosphere and hopefully coming down somewhere in one piece. That would be very, very <laughs> nice. It doesn't always happen like that. And unfortunately, the way I left the moon, well, yeah, we have come down in the dark side of Kerbin. There is no sun. We have turned to the dark side and you probably cannot see a single damn thing. So I have actually sped this up to four times speed in editing because you can't see anything. What's exciting about this? We're going to land in the dark. I'm really disappointed that I landed in the dark and I probably should have spent more time actually figuring out my trajectory to get back to Kerbin so that I would have landed on the light side rather than being able to see absolutely nothing. But the craft did flip around the right way. So we are landing arse first, which is kind of nice. And you can see that bit of debris that just popped up on the screen. Well, that was the space center. So somehow I was pretty damn close to landing at the space center too, which was not intended in the slightest, but nice that I got close. Anyway, now time for the final stages of this starship's flight. The three vector engines fire up into life once again, as I see my surface speed is 150 meters per second and rapidly dropping as we are approaching the ground. 2000 meters up, so I decide I'm going to cut back on these a little bit because I do not have an awful lot of Delta B left. 400 meters per second right now. Unfortunately, I may have cut back a little too much at this point in trying to conserve fuel and it is almost impossible to correct the craft and we go smashing into the water, breaking all of the engines. But the rest of Starship did survive and I managed to bring it back down safely. Just not completely in one piece. A big thanks to Pentium, So Not The Hero Type, That Unreal Guy, Zaretya and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. I have been Karnasa, like and subscribe for more and I will see you later.